Welcome to Authentic Work with God. Today's topic is, what is your testimony? Our Bible passage is taken from John chapter 9, verses 13 through 23. I read, They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mold and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man, what have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son. The parents answered, and we know he was born blind, but how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he's of age, ask him. Envy, jealousy, opposition are normal events of life. People who are evil oppose goodness. Jesus suffered in the hands of the religious leaders of his day because he was the truth and he spoke the truth. Like in the time of Jesus, Today, people will look for force in your life and plot against you if you stand alone for righteousness. In the passage we have just read, Jesus had healed the man who was born blind. This act of healing became offensive to the Pharisees, not because there was false healing, but because the one they hated was credited for the healing that was Jesus. When people hate you and refuse to recognize your achievements, what do you do? Do you try hard to convince them? Do you try to please them? Do you hate them back and oppose them too? None of the above works for a child of God. Instead, consider these. One, continue to love them and toe the line of righteousness. Two, do not compromise your principles and Christian lifestyle. Three, refuse to take the credit which is due God for acts of righteousness. Four, keep being humble and do not call attention to yourself. Five, Resist the temptation of adopting the attitude of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The blind man who was healed refused to be intimidated. If in verse 17 we say that. What do you say about Jesus? What testimonies do you bear to members of your family, your work colleagues, your schoolmates, and your friends? Do these people know you as a Christian? Can they immediately, seeing you, recognize the new thing that has happened to you? If you find time, read again John chapter 9. In fact, I'm going to ask you to read it. John chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. You know, we read from verse 13. But read from verse 1 to 12. The difference was obvious from a blind beggar to a sighted independent man. What about you? 
what are people saying about you? When a person encounters Jesus Christ, the following things happen. He does not remain the same. He will adopt a new lifestyle. He will lose friends and attract enemies from everywhere because his life has changed. He will experience a new kind of joy which does not come from anything material, anything sexual, or anything emotional. He will live positively. He will represent Jesus anytime, anywhere. Do you have a testimony? If you do, what is it? The man born blind who Jesus hid said, Jesus is a prophet. I know he has come from God. This man refused to be intimidated. He refused to join the wrong but popular party. He stayed with the lonely Jesus. What about you? Have you truly met Jesus? What happened to your life when you did? Are people aware of that transformation which took place? And if yes, what are you saying about Jesus? Or have you joined the popular but wrong party? If you have, please go back to your so-called turning point and discover what went wrong and amend it. Allow the Lord to come into your life uh, through the Holy Spirit to ginger you, to help you to go on. Do not compromise your faith. There is still time to make up, even now. May the Lord help you. These days of difficulty and problems and hunger and want, it is possible to derail because of uh, material uh, inducements. But please do not. I like, ask you to hang on to Jesus Christ. Your testimony must not be compromised. May the Lord help you as you continue to honor him with your life, in your family, in your workplace, um, in, the, in the society at large. You cannot afford to compromise your faith. I know these are difficult days. I, I, I understand that. And uh, the temptation is there for you to um, say, okay, let me do this and then I will pick the Bible tomorrow. Uh, don't do that because you don't know whether you will see tomorrow or not. It is my prayer that you will see tomorrow. But then make your Lord proud by living a life that will honor him and glorify his name. No matter wherever you find yourself, do not be pressured to do things that will um, demean Jesus Christ in your life. But every time, everywhere, uphold the name of Christ. Be a testimony that will draw men unto him as you live your life. Father, I pray for my listeners. I know it is not easy these days. With the things that are happening here and there, hunger and poverty and, and all kinds of uh, injustice happening here and there, the temptation is there for your, pe for your people to compromise. Their faith and, and their righteous stands uh, on issues. But I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, to... Help them to stand strong anywhere, anytime, that your name will be glorified. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. This is again your brother and friend, Peter Nlemadin Don Wachuku, Director, Center for Family Life and Pastoral Care, Owere, Nigeria. God bless you. Really good.